Shalom. This is your host, Pastor Enoch Perry. Welcome to The Journey, a show where we profile prominent members of our society who have made it to the top against all odds, of course, by the help of the Holy Spirit. Today in the studio, I have Dawn Foyth. Welcome to the studio, ma'am. Thank you very much. Thanks for having me. You are a musician, yep. a social activist, and yep. an author. That's it. Where did this whole thing start? Um, I was born in Durban, Gwamashu. Okay. And raised by women only. Mm. My grandmother had lost her husband years ago, and she was a single mum. And mm -hmm. my mum um, also raised me as a single woman. Mm -hmm. And I think I've just constantly been surrounded by strong women. Um, I've been surrounded by women who had to step up mm. and get the job done. So my grandmother raised, I think, nine children by herself. Wow. In the wow. end, and you know, during the apartheid, it was tough okay, for a imagine. black woman to be able mm. to mm. Um, send all her kids to school, and for different reasons, some of them had had children as well. Mm. Myself being mm. one of those kids, mm. and we all lived in this small house. But I think for me, I never felt without um, because of the strength of these women and the choices they made in mm. how they raised us. Um, my grandmother was also um, very active um, politically. Okay, you know, so. We knew exactly what was happening in the state of the country, even though we were small and mm, didn't mm. really understand politics, but we knew what was what and why it was the way it was. And, you know, she raised us to believe different to that. You know, so I've always um, been told, especially by her, that I was a solid and I was a strong woman. Well, oh, that, so she, she affirmed you. That's it, you know, so she would say, you would go out there and they'll say different things about you, but let me tell you who you are before mm. other people um, impose on you their perspectives Beautiful. and their understanding of who you are. Yeah, and so I just think that in, in, then, in, in growing up, there's always in, been that sense of responsibility mm. towards community, that sense of responsibility around creating a better society for all of us because that's what my grandmother did. She went to church, she had a nine to five job that worked six days a week. By mm. evening, she was at ANC meetings um, mm -hmm. trying to work out how to create a better society. People who were struggling mm -hmm. in their own homes and didn't have food were also staying with us. Like our house was constantly, mm -hmm. constantly packed. Um, yeah, and I think the things for me that what that did for me was um, make me feel that we are responsible for each other. Mm -hmm. You know, the Bible speaks about being our brother's keeper because that's what my grandmother did. She not only looked after her nine kids, mm -hmm. then looked after her grandchildren. Wow. She then also looked after everybody else. Mm. But she was savvy too, you know, we were one of the first people to get a TV set okay. in our community. So <laughs> my granny was like, you know, with it. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. Um, you know, and she loved, she loved life. She um, loved God and, um, you know, it was, it was necessary. We, I talk about going to school for six days a week because, mm. you know, we went to school Monday to Friday, but on Sunday we'd go to Sunday school. And at the church that I went to, it was a school school. I can imagine. <laughs> you know, it was like an all day school and we sat for exams. Is it? At the, yep, we wow. sat for exams at the end of every year and then you graduated to the next level the following year and mm -hmm. you displayed in front of the whole church mm -hmm. the things mm -hmm. that you'd learned throughout the year. So you needed to know your scriptures, you needed to know your theology. Mm -hmm. And yes, yeah, so it was it was quite an intense and a fun um, you know time. And I think around about 1991 when the transition um, for black folks to be able to go to multiracial schools. My grandmother was very active in also making sure, um, in partnership with my mum. Mm. My mum got married okay. when I was about six to my stepdad and the, and the challenges of having had a child out of marriage and then mm. getting married again. So I had to stay behind with my grandmother. So mm. that's why I speak a lot about my grandmum grandma, yeah. because in while my mum went and forged. Uh, um, how did you feel at that time? Did you feel that uh, your mother maybe is uh, neglecting you? I think I did. You know, my mom have worked, um, and I have worked through some tough situations. Mm -hmm. Your perception and your understanding of circumstances as a child is very different to what it is for the adult. You know, mm -hmm. and I think for my mom, for her leaving me behind with my grandmother was the best decision okay. she felt she could have made while she was going into this new marriage, this new space. She didn't think it would actually be conducive to everything that I needed and she wouldn't be able to give me uh, her undivided attention. Mm -mm. Whereas for me as a six year old, I was like, yo mama, you leaving me behind and that mm -hmm. sense of rejection. Um, but now that we've talked about many things, it's very clear to me that that's not at all where mm, she was. Mm. And I'm a mom now too. Mm, so mm, I understand mm. some of the choices and the decisions I make on my son's behalf, 
mm -hmm. um, if he, you know, if he um, had full comprehension how he might think they are contra to what I'm actually mm -hmm. um, doing. But there was a sense of like, oh, I'm left behind and mum, you married and you have a new kid and where do I fit? You know, and I had a big, I had a big, big issue, I think, when I was younger, okay. that my mum had a different surname to me and my stepdad had a different surname. And then my then um, half siblings, who are my full siblings, it's nonsense to call people half. Mm -hmm. So my siblings, you know, and I was the only one who didn't have a surname. But I think that that makes me now stronger than what it initially tried to to break me and feel alienated and feel different in a negative way. And I think um, it's become actually something that I love, the, the point of difference mm. about who I am. But it was amazing because then God always will, will put someone in your life that you need to fill in the gap that you feel you're missing. And for me, it was, it was my grandmother. My grandmother would, she used to work at Pick and Pay mm. um, Monday to Friday. And when she'll see all um, the ladies buying, what was it, Ninja Turtles okay. um, for their kids. And she didn't even know what that, that mm. was. And she'd come home with like little Ninja Turtles. She's like, hey, I saw all the people, she was a teller. I saw people buying Ninja <laughs> Turtle things. Okay, so okay. I, I think you guys, maybe you might like it too. And she'd mm. just constantly throw things for us. And at school, when all the other kids were having different things, we could be, we could go home and say, Granny, can you get X, Y, Z for us? And she would, but she was still very strict. Wow. You know, you still had to come um, from school straight home. You still had to do your chores. You still had to go around the community selling the tomatoes and the onions and the whatever and when all that was done then you could go play and do what you needed to do so I think I place a lot of value um, in my mum I think mm -hmm. she's an exceptional woman who's managed to endure a lot of tough circumstances um, but I give even more credit to my grandmother for me for me God my grandmother my mother mm. uh, are the critical things that have informed and shaped who I am um, as a woman, as mm. a woman in God, mm. and, and I think as a woman in community, mm. and have influenced, therefore, all the choices and the decisions I've made with my life. Wow. Yeah. Now, at this um, uh, moment, when you stay with your, with your grandmother, mm -hmm. uh, did you have a personal relationship with the Lord? Not personal. We, I had an imposed relationship with I had an imposed yeah, yeah. relationship with the Lord. I had a you go to church child because yes, this yes, is what we do. Absolutely. Yep, absolutely. like there's no two way. You sit, go to church, you're gonna get healed. Yeah, do you know yeah, what I mean? Yeah, like yeah. church church is the solution for mm. everything. No, wow. no, it wasn't it wasn't I think it wasn't personal for me mm -hmm. until nineteen ninety seven I was um I was in high school. Mm -hmm. in grade nine, I went to Guamashu Christian Center okay. and I remember sitting and they were reading a scripture that I think, you know, Isaiah, I don't remember what it was, but I just remember thinking, if you're going to get saved, that's just a weird scripture. Okay. Yeah, like I, I can't even tell you what it was, but wow. I remember about, I was speaking about separation and parting and, and, I, and I didn't understand, like, no, I can't, like, something's happening in me, but I don't know what it is. And it was a weird day because I'd just gone to church by myself, wow. um, which was weird and rare. Wow. But I had and I just felt like, okay, no, this is it. I want this sense of separation for myself. And I think I would have been 16, grade nine, yeah, about, around about 16. Wow. Wow. And I did, and I went up and I received God and I was in fire and I was amazing. But it was, it was a journey wow. because between 16 and now almost 35, mm. there's, you know, you know, there's just been highs and lows and the struggle of teenagehood while mm. you're trying to love God and the sense of understanding your own identity. Mm. Um, the chaos that teenagehood, the, the chaos and the blessing that teenage years are, um, was very challenging for me. Um, but I think that the greatest thing for me about knowing God at 16, mm. it, 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 it has brought me all the way here. I've yeah. seen him through all seasons. Mm. Um, I'm a very stubborn person. Mm. very stubborn and so we have challenging conversations with God and I think what's good for me is I have a long line of faith so I can look back mm. and go okay so when I was 16 you were able to be this for me and you were able um, to be a companion in this way so even where I am now I've, I've, I've got evidence that God exists wow. do you know what I mean and I've got a, a long a long a long line of proof mm. that he's real that he loves me that he can get me out of sticky situations that I've put myself in. Um, and that sometimes when hard things happen to me, he's there to save me and to protect me Powerful. from that. Yeah, yeah. Powerful. Uh, we are going to take a music break. And, Great. Uh, and uh, when we come back, more about the journey of uh, Down Faith. Stay tuned. Welcome back. I'm in a conversation with Down Faith. 
talking about her journey. My sister, mm -hmm. uh, before we could take a music break, you, 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 brief, you briefly spoke about your experience when you came to know the Lord Jesus mm -hmm. Christ at the age of 16. Maybe mm -hmm. I will need you to elaborate further okay. and connect it to your teenagehood uh, years. Okay, great. Um, I think it, it, was a, it was a great blessing for me, but it was also a tough if I can even say it, it was a tough age to receive God. Mm -hmm. Like it's great in the sense that it, it can be informative and assist in the choices that you make. But one of the hardest things for me was being a teenager in Christ and navigating life in a way that made sense to me versus what other young girls were, were up to and what they were doing. But also in the sense of self-discovery. Um, and because I hadn't, I think, I think what we do with, as parents, or at least in my experience, was because we all have different um, type of relationships with, mm. with God, we sometimes don't know how to help our kids personalize and get to understand God for themselves. And we try to um, provide this one shoe fits all. Mm. Um, and then it becomes quite complicated because I was now living in a different space. I'd gone to these multiracial schools and I was exposed to different things versus what my mom and my grandmother mm. were exposed to. So my expectations of life were different from theirs. And so that all you know, got intertwined with faith and therefore what does um, a young girl in Christ look like? There's this wow. traditional religious things that were being imposed on me that I just felt, well, if that's what it means mm -hmm. to be Christian, that doesn't quite work with my identity and what I'm, I'm about. So it was really, really tough because in essence then I felt there were three things I was trying to navigate. I was trying to figure myself, my own self-identity. Mm -hmm. I was trying to understand my relationship with God and I was trying to navigate this expectation that then my folks have on me and what a young girl in Christ. You know, you have to go to, what was it, Nkonzi is title, or is being Nkonzi in Dombi. Yeah. You know, and you go to Nkonzi in Dombi, and you're like, no, but these Ndombis don't even look like anything that I want to yeah. aspire yeah. to. This looks fake to me. This doesn't look authentic to me. This is not something that I can navigate. And if this is what God wants me to be, and this is how God wants me to be, mm. then actually I can't. I can't be that because it doesn't come natural mm. to me. And I think all teenagers are naturally rebellious because it is the separation okay. from parents. It's the separation of self-discovery. And I did then walk away very soon afterwards, which was a shame. Mm -hmm. So around about, probably when I was about 18, mm -hmm. um, I started then going, nah, I'm just, Jesus, just, you know, stop in the stop street, <laughs> <ne?"> <laughs> me, I'm gonna go there. <laughs> yeah. When I'm done, I'll come back and find of you course. here because yeah. you are also adding more confusion in my life wow. than you are simplifying my life. Mm -hmm. And in the walking away, there's a bunch of like, stupid things mm -hmm. like stupid things i did the you know i did the stupid things you know and you know there's one significant thing that i think for me i regret it the most um and then i had an encounter with a guy for the first time mm -hmm. and i remember through the whole experience just thinking what are you doing you know like if the things that you are running to chase mm. are this this is not you you know, you are not, you are not about this. You are not about this life. And sure, you might not have a clear understanding of exactly what it is that you are about, mm -hmm. but this is not it. And that was, you know, good, I suppose I could say, because it, it made me turn around and go back to the stop street and go, actually, oh, yeah, like, hang on. Thank <laughs> so please, you're waiting still waiting you. where I left you. So wow. please, you're still waiting um, where I left you. Hang on a second. Can you tell me about yourself? I don't want to know about the Jesus that my mom believes in. Mm. I don't want to know about the Jesus that my grandmother believes in. And sure, those Jesus are amazing because they are incredible women. But I don't want that Jesus because I'm not my mom and I love my mom. And I'm not my grandmother and I love my grandmother. I'm me. Can you see me for me and then help me understand what is the meaning of life? Why am I here? You know, and, and, and throughout that whole experience between 16 and at that point, probably now 20, I'd become anorexic. In high school, I had a lovely, lovely friend, um, you know, and it was all about image, about losing the weight. And she was skinnier than I was. And so I used to look in the mirror and go, if she thinks she's fat, I must be obese. Like, mm. I, I'm, I'm, I must seriously be like a guinea on levels that are unbelievable. And so I stopped eating. And for the first, you know, and I went through um, being diagnosed as being anorexic. And that was at the height of the HIV epidemic. And that's another story. We need another interview for that because then the assumption that I was sick and mm. being sent to, 
you know, finding healers and finding, you know, and all along. And I was like, no, mom, like, seriously, it, it's, it's nothing of the sort. And if it is, and if it is, this is not the journey and this is not the experience and this is not how we go about it. But, you know, in the long run, the, the, the grace of God and the love of God and, and for me, seeing him almost consistently in challenging situations, rising up and providing peace in chaos and calming the seas in, in the crazy space was amazing. And the life changer for me was once I had reached a point where the anorexia was treated, I got an opportunity to go to the United States. Um, you know, and I think I was 19 at this point. And I said to mom, I'm not going to university until I know who I am. I'm not gonna study a single piece of paper until I know that it lines up with exactly what I'm supposed to do. And I think that was a game changer for me. Wow. Moving out of South Africa and seeing the world beyond the borders of South Africa, experiencing life, I think it made me know for fact that there's more to life than the limitations and the glasses and, and how we block our own view. It made me see the world that I read about in the Bible, that God created this vast and beautiful mm. world. The idea for a 19 year old to be on a plane on the way via London first, by myself. I didn't even know like when they took my bags at the airport, and I was thinking it's like a greyhound. You give them the ticket and then you take your bags with you. <laughs> yeah. Then they take my bags and I'm like, ah, how am I going to know where my bags, where do I go to fetch my bags? Why are you taking my bags? That whole experience for me broke the shell. And I think from 19, I've then just slowly been walking this journey with God where he shows me that there's always more to life if you would trust him um, and quieten the noise. We live in a very loud world. Quieten the noise and then trust me, I will walk with you and I will show you things you've never imagined and never seen. And I think my life has never been the same since 19 years of age. Wow, mm -hmm. powerful, powerful. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much, uh, my sister, no for, for sharing your story. Mm -hmm. And we will continue next week. Uh, and I believe that uh, somebody out there is touched and equipped further to look at life differently. Yeah. Thank you very much to our viewers for watching our program. We'll continue next week looking at the journey of Dawn Stay Blessed.